CDB and EIB signed new multi-million dollar deal for the hurricane-ravaged Caribbean. Details to this story and more in the National Report. With the National Report, I'm Delroy Luzon. Hurricane-ravaged islands will soon benefit from a new multi-million dollar deal by the Caribbean Development Bank and the European Investment Bank. CARICOM Chairman and Grenada's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell on Monday welcomed the establishment of an emergency post-disaster reconstruction financing initiative to help the region recover from recent hurricane events. Dr. Mitchell, also Chairman of the Caribbean Development Bank, was speaking in Germany on the new initiative between the European Investment Bank and the CDB. The arrangement will support investments for infrastructural reconstruction projects in the Caribbean in the wake of the recent hurricanes. The repercussions of climate-related disasters weigh heavily on development prospects of small island development states, which all have other inherent vulnerabilities. Strengthening resilience therefore requires significant financial resources, most of which we are, we are not in a position to provide from domestic resources. In this light, we welcome the support from our partners in the international community. And today we particularly want to thank the European Investment Bank for the support it has provided over the years to the Caribbean Development Bank to assist borrowing member countries in addressing the challenges of climate change. The new $24 million U.S. dollar financing package is an addition to the U.S. $120 million Climate Action Framework loan signed in May of this year and which remains the EIB's biggest loan to the Caribbean. Eligible investments under the new loan will include infrastructural reconstruction with a focus on building back better and integrating climate risk and vulnerability assessments into the projects. CDB President Dr. Warren Smith and EIB's Vice President with Responsibility for Climate Action, Jonathan Taylor, signed the new agreement during the UN Climate Change Conference, or COP23, in Bonn, Germany. EIB's support for small island states has involved climate mitigation and adaptation projects in the Caribbean, Pacific, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean. So projects include an airport in the Cook Islands, roads in La Réunion, a wind farm in Cape Verde, solar microgrids in the Maldives, upgraded water systems in the Seychelles, and a hydro project in the Solomon Islands. On Friday, we signed the Fiji Water and Wastewater Project, which will upgrade and develop water supply and wastewater infrastructure in the greater urban areas of Fiji's capital, Suva, to increase climate change resilience. The Raven Bridge at Upper Manjalu St. George was officially opened on Sunday. The construction of the bridge was promised during the tenure of the NDC administration. However, no work was done. Parliamentary Representative the Honorable Gregory Bowen told the gathering that more work will be done within the community. He highlighted the lighting of the Manjalu playing field. We will be lighting the Manjalu playing field. You know this. And that is why I'm telling you that the fact that they're not here is only because they had to play the football and I encourage them to get some of the people as well to support him. You don't want to go and play, and then you don't have your supporters around. But that playing field will be lit. The contract is signed. The equipment and the materials are coming in. And so very soon, we expect that everything will be in Grenada, and by January, we will be seeing the light poles going up. So our community can not only have good roads, but they can walk through the good roads to go to school, to educate themselves, and to recreate. Because recreation does play an important role in the lives of our community. He said the construction of the bridge is only the first phase, with roads and drains also in the pipeline. We will be concreting the roads. And remember, everything that will happen here happen in consultation with you, the residents. We will be cutting across the road so that we can take the waters coming high up through a culvert as was done by the contractor in two areas, we will be putting a third one. And this has been pointed out to us by landowners around, in particular again Mr. Steve Hall, who is always down here as you know, and watching the water coming and damaging his lands and so forth. So we'll get it across the road and across the drains. But as your audience, you're always there. Then we'll concrete, come up. That is drains only. 
And working on the advice of Mr. Houston and his, his technical team, the idea was to concrete this road. And they indicated that it has a solid foundation. And the best thing to do it quickly. And we know that we have discommoded you during the repairs now on many occasions. Grenada joined other Commonwealth countries to observe Remembrance Day to honor the soldiers who lost their lives in the line of duty in World War I. This year, the procession and lane of wreaths took place on Sunday at the Sir Eric Geary Botanical Gardens. Sunday's procession saw members of the Royal Grenada Police Force and its contingents, cadets, nurses, pathfinders and girl guides marching from the traffic department on the Carnage to the Botanical Gardens. This year's salute began with a two-minute silence, followed by a single blast from the cannon. The wreaths were laid by Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade, Acting Prime Minister the Honorable Gregory Bowen, Acting Commissioner of Police, Commissioner of Prisons, members of the Grenada Cadet Corps, Scouts and Guides Associations, and members of the Diplomatic Corps. This is the National Report. More news after the break. Logos Hope, the world's largest floating book fair. Come and meet the volunteer crew from more than 60 different countries. Browse through and purchase from our collection of over 5,000 titles of books. Tour through the Journey of Life display. Enjoy a delicious treat in the International Cafe. Ask about tickets for onboard events. And chat with one of our crew about life on board the Logos Hope. See you there. The elderly constituents of St. Andrew Southwest were given a treat last week on Bathway Beach by the parliamentary representative, Honorable Yolan Bain Hosford. Honorable Bain Hosford said the elderly luncheon is an annual event to show appreciation to the senior citizens during the month of October, which is observed as the month of the elderly. It's an outing where every October, November, we would take them to the beach. Um, they would have a good time. They would eat, drink and chat and some of them would bathe, those who can, you know, bathe and, um, you know, talk about the old times, reminisce over all the old years and the fun they have had in their life and not sometimes they talk about their problems as well. So it's an outing, it's, it's, it's an outdoor activity that we have organized over nine years now, They've been, we've been doing that. Minister Bain Hosford's constituency places heavy emphasis on the seniors. A Golden Years Center has therefore been established where the seniors are fed and cared for once a week. We have this indoor activity every Wednesday, the, you know, the, a bus picks them up, take them to the center, they, you know, get some spiritual upliftment from a pastor in the area. We have a roster that we, you know, they, so we don't have one pastor coming to talk with them and chat with them. Um, and we, they, they have meals, they play games, they do craft and they have fun, they laugh and they keep active. We check the blood sugar and blood pressure. We look at the medication they're on and we give them advice and we also give little health talk, health tips to keep them abreast of what is going on. And that's the National Report. I'm Delroy Luzon.